What is up everyone, Movie Worm back again with another Blu-ray and 4K update. Now this might be my last one before Christmas, so I thought why not, let's just rock my Nightmare on Elm Street Christmas jumper. It is December of course. Now, I've got a nice little stack here, I haven't done one of these for a while, I do apologise, but uh, I'm very selective with what I buy these days. Although I did get caught up in the indicator sale a little bit here, so picked up six titles from that but i had my eye on a few of them and i've also got a package from tom 180 who is one of the subscribers who's been with me from the start but I, I he's a friend now i speak to him all the time on instagram i've sent him a few things in the past he's just a really nice guy he's very very supportive of a lot of youtubers i see him commenting in live streams and stuff so tom thanks man you know you know i appreciate it I've, I've told you how much you know i was made up with this package so thank you so much he was going to keep it a surprise but i guessed one of the movies because he gave me a couple of clues and in the end up telling me the other one so i do know what's in here so let's just get it open two movies i do not own definitely so get the package out go okay so the first movie that we have here, I have seen the first one, and I think it's a very good film. Just haven't seen this one, and it's been a... I really should have got to it by now. And that is Train Spotting 2. Uh, Danny Boyle returning to his sequel, uh, but I don't... I can't really speak much about the film, because I, I just... I haven't seen it, but it's, apparently it's got all the returning characters in there and stuff. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out. As, as I say, I do like the first one. I think it's a very, very good British movie. So thank you so much, Tom for train spotting two looking forward to checking that one out and we also have the italian job which is probably one of the most popular movies i've never gotten around to i've heard so many great things about this film and i've heard it's one of michael king's best who is a wonderful actor isn't he so uh yeah tom really really happy with them to me thank you so much i'll try and get these watched as soon as possible i know you've given me sent me another couple of a while back that i haven't got to um, I did get to a couple of them, but there's still a couple I need to watch. I really want to get round to them, mate. So th thank you so much for these. Glad to have them in the collection. Um, yeah, buzzing with them, mate. Thank you so much. So first up, we do have a 4K. And I went to... I booked this to watch this at the cinema. Got cancelled last minute because I had to take my wife to hospital. She was pregnant and she had some things going on. Everything was fine. And the second time I went to see her... The projector broke and melted 22 minutes into the film. <laughs> so I thought I was just born to not watch this movie, but I did pick it up in the Black Friday sale, and that is Transformers Rise of the Beasts. I definitely wanted to watch this. Um, one of my most wanted to watch 2023 movies, and I watched it the other day, and I thought it was, I thought it was okay. I mean, it's not my favorite Transformers movie by any means, but it is definitely better. The Revenge of the Fallen, definitely better than Age of Extinction. I would say it's better than the second one. Forgot the subtitle of that. Um, but I think I do prefer Bumblebee, Dark of the Moon, and the first one. Uh, but it was, you know, it was a fun enough time. You know, <laughs> Age of Extinction and The Dark and The Last Night are just kind of unbearable to sit through. But this one, I had a fun time with it. Now, my big problems with it, with the actual beast, I don't think they brought much to the movie. I still love the Decepticons way more than these. Um, the, the villain was quite cool, I thought. Well, and his little his little henchman. Didn't really care for the human characters and stuff, and it did play a lot on that in this movie. But when the uh, Optimus Prime and stuff are battling, that's where the movies are. Look great on 4K, though, on my OLED and stuff. Yeah, uh, So, yeah, glad to own that. And I do own all the Transformers movies now, so glad to add that to the Transformers collection. Next up, we have a film called the vanishing now i'd heard pete from play tendo kai and all the guys over there on their live stream scott the movie critic and stuff talk about this film and it's i think it's a dutch movie uh, i really wanted to see it after hearing them guys talk about it and then i looked it up on letterbox and it had crazy ratings four and a half five stars so i thought you know what i'm just gonna get this and i got i think i got this in the two for 20 sale and I watched it with my wife as soon as it came because I really wanted to check it out. And you know what? It was a slight disappointment for me. I, this is basically a movie about this guy who goes to this service station with his wife and she goes missing. Or it might be his girlfriend. I can't quite remember. She just goes missing. And it's like three years later and he's, he can't get his head around what has happened to her. 
and he wants to get to the bottom of it and that's basically the movie now i don't want to say too much more than that because something happens in the middle with another character and it starts to go down a little bit of another path and eventually has a very grim end to this movie now i wouldn't say it's a full horror film but the horror elements are in there but for me i just don't think it had the impact that it had with a lot of other people However, I still enjoyed it. I gave it 3 out of 5 on Letterboxd. It's still fine. And if you're interested in movies like this, like crime thrillers, I would say give it a go and make your own mind up. But I'm glad to have seen it now, definitely. So thanks for the recommendation, everyone, on the live streams. Next up is a movie called Extro. I watched this on Prime years ago, and I've had it on my list for ages, and it was in the 2 for 20 sale with The Vanishing. And this is about a young boy whose father goes missing and he was like taken by aliens or something and <laughs> three years later the father comes back and the boy is over the moon and stuff and you don't quite know if it's the father or something else and you know what this is like a b movie it looks terrible and stuff but i actually quite enjoyed it i put it on my list for a reason i wanted to add it to the collection some weird scenes in here i think there was one involving this like toy soldier doll thing i can't quite remember what it was but it looked silly um but overall i i thought this was a, a quite a fun time so i would have to rewatch this again to fully remember it but i just remember having a, an okay time with it so yeah i think there's like four of these films now um but i've only seen the first one so that is extra and next up we have an absolutely terrible movie but i had to pick it up to put it in my collection i want all these films on blu-ray unfortunately they are not all released here in the uk but this one got released a few weeks ago so i grabbed it straight away and that is the texas chainsaw massacre the next generation now weirdly enough this isn't my least favorite texas chainsaw massacre film but i would have it second to last leatherface the texas chainsaw massacre 3 is my least favorite because it was just very boring and dull however this one it's got a lot of problems, but it was a little bit more enjoyable. Matthew McConaughey is off the scale in this. He's just screaming everywhere and stuff. You've got Renee Zellweger in there as well. Two age listers who want nothing to do with this movie. And it's just got so many weird things later on in the third act involving, I, I think, these people. Are, <laughs> it's got something to do with sci-fi and stuff. That With the, the, the what they call the, the, the Sawyer family. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? But it's one of them films that I think you can have a bit of fun with, how ridiculous it is. And I'm glad to own it in the collection. Please release Text Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, Leatherface, and there's another one, Leatherface 3. Uh, please release them on Blu ray so I can have the whole collection. It does my bloody nut in the way they won't do that in the UK. But America have got them all. Maybe I just I need to just get a region free player, man. I really do. It's been too long now. Now, next up is a movie I watched over on Shudder. And I was quite a fan of it. I wouldn't say a big fan, but I enjoyed it. So I decided to add it on to my collection on Blu-ray. And that is Eli Roth's The Green Inferno. And by the way, guys, if you are interested, I've done a full Eli Roth ranking over on my horror channel. So I'll leave that link down below if you want to check that out. This basically follows this young girl played by Eli Roth's wife. Oh, really sorry i forgot her name she should be on the back lorenza Izzo. um she's eli roth's wife in real life and she decides to join this activist group who are against you know pulling trees down in the rainforest and stuff like that and she wants to join them to make a difference so they go and protest to all these construction workers and stuff and they sort of have a plane crash and these cannibals end up going to the plane and kidnapping them and jailing them in their little village and killing them one by one and eating them in front of each other now there are some scenes in here that are brutal one guy is mutilated while he's alive and it's horrible to watch and all their friends are watching in disbelief but then there's some comedic moments like eli roth likes to do where they're putting like characters are putting big bags of weed and dead bodies in the jail and then when the cannibals are eating them they're all getting high and stuff and then the cannibals start to get the munchies so they come after them and the plan backfires stuff like that you know <laughs> there's a guy jerking off in a cage at one point to release some stress 
<laughs> but the brutality does mix with the like one minute you're laughing the next minute you're like holy shit and i found like i was doing that with the movie thanksgiving as well which is a new eli roth release but overall i'm glad to own this in the collection i thought this was quite a fun time so next up we have the indicator sale now i've got to admit guys i have not watched all of these i've seen two out of the six but i did have my eye on quite a few of them so next up we have never take sweets from a stranger and Scott again and stuff and Nadge Rock God were talking about this movie and I thought I need to watch this and I did I watched it as soon as it come it's only a one minute one hour and 20 minute movie and it is absolutely brilliant this is about two young girls who are just out playing and they go and see this guy who offers them sweets but he sort of forces them to do something and the parents find out and take this guy to court but this guy is like one of the richest he's like the richest guy in the town he basically runs the town and it's going to be a big uphill battle and all the community and stuff are getting involved in this court trial and stuff like that i don't want to say too much but the last 20 minutes you know elevates a little bit and you're like holy shit it goes sort of down a slight horror route now what I gotta say about this, this is a film from 1960, and the acting is just off the scale in this. Like, look, I'm, I know there's good actors these days and stuff, but I just feel like all these cast members are just putting their heart and soul into everything here. I felt that way when I watched uh, Singing in the Rain. You can just tell that they're just, these are absolute elite professional actors, and everyone puts a great performance in here. Also, you can hear every single line of dialogue. Like, I watch movies now, and I'm just like, what did they say then? I have to rewind and put the subtitles on. And it's not my heart to hear them because I heard every single word in this one. Like, I watched Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, last night, which is a really good film, by the way. But me and my wife had to rewind one scene three times to say, what did he say then? And we have to put the subtitles on. <laughs> I wish they deliver their lines properly, like actors and stuff back in the day. And this film is a prime example of that. But you know what? I highly recommend this movie to everyone. It might be a little bit upsetting at times, especially in the third act, but definitely worth a go. Uh, fantastic movie. That really, really surprised me. So again, guys, thanks for the recommendation over on that live stream. Next up, we have Happy Birthday to Me. Haven't watched this one. And I was in two minds whether to pick it up, but then I seen on Letterboxd had quite high ratings. So I thought, you know what, why not? The cover was really drawing me in. I do love a good slasher movie. I'm not sure if this is an anthology film or not, though. Um, I don't know. Uh, but basically, this is a little bit of a blind by which I try to stay away from these days. But when the indicator sale is three for fifteen pounds, sometimes you got to break that rule, and I, it, it's hard, I hardly do that these days. I used to want to just buy every single movie years ago, but now I am very selective of what I buy. Um, but this looks like my type of film anyway. So, yeah, I thought I'd grab that. Happy birthday to me. Next up, we have Mia Farrow in See No Evil. Now, I'd heard a lot of people back in the day talk about how good this movie is. Uh, maybe, don't you guys remember Lauren from Lauren's Collection? She used to love this film. I think Leon from Leon Talks Films thought it was quite good as well. And I've had my eye on this for a couple of years now, and I just never got around to getting it. So, glad to have finally picked that one up. Just haven't watched it yet. And next up, we have Body Double, a Brian De Palma film. Again, I've not seen this one, uh, but it sounded very, very interesting when I looked it up. And it's like a crime noir thriller, I think. Brian De Palma, who did make Scarface, is uh, a really good director for some of the films I've seen. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out as well. Might have been Mike Cinema Axeman who was talking about this as well. I think, maybe. I, I'm not sure. Uh, next up, 10 Rillington Place. Again, another one I heard from a few people say this is good. And this one, like See No Evil, has been on the list for quite a while. But this 3 for 15 deal, man, it just pushed me to get them. So looking forward to checking this one out as well. Uh, this might, I think this one might be about a true story of, yeah, true story about this guy who buried people in the backyard. Um, but Richard Attenborough, I, I don't know if he plays the villain in this. I think he does. Looking forward to seeing his performance in this. And last up, we do have It Came From Beneath the Sea. And I did actually watch this one. I was just in the mood for a old-fashioned monster movie. And I did get round to this. Now, 
the human side of things with this, which is usually the case with these old monster movies, wasn't great. There was a romantic story going on here that I just did not care about whatsoever. But when we got to the monster parts of this big octopus squid thing attacking the city, pulling bridges down, wrapping its tentacles around buses and stuff, I thought, yeah, that shit is for me. So a film of two halves, really. My cousin's a big fan of this, actually. He said he used to love this film. Uh, but yeah, not bad. If you can stomach them old-fashioned monster films from the 50s and stuff, you might enjoy this one. 1955, this one's from. So yeah, not a bad movie. I, I didn't mind it. So it, it. That is, it came from beneath the sea. Okay, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this Blu-ray and 4K update. Sorry, it's been a while. Uh, hopefully, I'll have one just after Christmas. Um, I don't know. I, I got my wife meant to be getting me some things and stuff like that, so we'll see. Oh, by the way, guys, while I'm here, just quickly, I'm just going to grab something off the shelf. Okay, guys, I really just wanted to mention this video game here, and that is Robocop Rogue City. Now, Robocop is my favourite video game uh, movie of all time and when this game came out i've had it on pre-order for like the last nine months i jumped at the chance to play it and as soon as it came i just installed it straight away and didn't stop until i platinum the game now you know what this is such a fun time it's a double a standard game not triple a and you can tell that there's some faults here and there but i never once got bored of shooting bad guys with robocops auto nine and it was just a really fun time it knows exactly what it is and it delivers it if you're a fan of the terminator resistance game you'll like this but this is a little bit better than that it's a love letter to robocop fans if you're a fan of the movie you'll enjoy this going around the police station and stuff it's just so well done you got ann lewis in here you know sergeant reed it is a robocop fans dream game so i definitely recommend this if you're on the fence but if you're a Robocop fan, definitely, definitely give this a go. I absolutely love this. So that is Robocop Rogue City. So that is it, guys. That is it for this Blu-ray and 4K update. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want more Blu-ray and 4K updates, they'll be down below along with the Horror Channel. Thanks so much, everyone. You all take care, and I'll see you all in the next video.